No, I think. Yes, we're not ready yet. We're not ready yet. Okay. All right, thank you. Do with your space.
Thank you. And uh, welcome to the launch of the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage, or ICH, fund project under the theme, Strengthening Capacities at the National and Local Levels for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage in Dominica. I am Ilson Matthew, Acting Chief Cultural Officer under the Ministry of Sports, Culture, and Community Development. Um, let's please stand for the national anthem as I call Ms. Tasha Peltier, Cultural Officer, to lead us in that, followed by a prayer by Mr. Stevenson Hyacinth. Father, we are thankful to see this new day. As we gathered today for the launching of UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage Project, we pray for your wisdom and guidance. Father, bless the presenters and give us the desire to find ways to excel and to challenge ourselves to make use of the opportunity afforded to us through this project. This we ask in your name for Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Ms. Peltier and Mr. Hyacinth. Please be seated. Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence. Honorable Rosalind Paul, Minister for Sports, Culture, and Community Development. Honorable Kozia Frederick, Minister for Environment, Rural Modernization, and Kalinago Upliftment. Representative of PS Education, Ms. Giselle Alpot. Representative for Ministry of Agriculture. Former Secretary Generals Gloria Schillingford and Athene Douglas Murdoch. Media, all present, good morning. Again. We have a vibrant heritage, and our living heritage is what defines us as Dominicans. We are therefore happy to welcome you today to the launch of the Dominica National Commission for UNESCO Implemented and UNESCO ICH Fund Supported Project, Strengthening Capacities at the national and local levels for the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage in Dominica. This project aims to raise awareness regarding Dominica's living heritage among our people, including all our traditions, to ensure that Dominica establishes the basis for the implementation of the 2003 convention through a community-based approach. Through this project, we hope to focus on building awareness of the importance of safeguarding this heritage through the work of government agencies and civil society partners. And so we invite you to get involved and help us to deliver a strong project for the benefit of all Dominicans. We are happy and grateful to partner with UNESCO to build capacities, support transmission, and safeguard this heritage and look for ways to ensure that this heritage contributes to the sustainable development of those who practice it. I would now like to call on Mr. Yuri Peshkov 
Program Specialist for Culture at UNESCO at the UNESCO office in Jamaica and Andrea Richards, UNESCO expert, for a presentation of the project's objectives and deliverables. And that will be done via the digital platform. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Matthew. Um, it will be a short introduction. Um, so here, to the project um, and uh, in terms of timing I will be presenting but of course I mean we are relying on expertise and um, um, dedication of our expert Andrea Richards that is uh, in, in the room as well. So the project is aiming to build the uh, critical level of, of experiences and knowledges and the government uh, and community level in Dominica uh, while safeguarding the intangible cultural heritage that is uh, 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 vulnerable to disasters, as we know from 2017 uh, by passing of the uh, hurricane. And um, the, the, the ICH that is uh, in the long term will contribute to uh, ensure the viability of the members, living heritage. Of course, the, the, the project that is dealing with the uh, ICH and communities is a gender responsive uh, project. And it also requires a multi stakeholder approach and collaboration with the indigenous communities. The duration of the project is 18 months. What we are planning to do with um, all together? There are two phases. Phase one is. Um, where we have uh, stakeholder consultations and the needs assessment. So we are basically in state, uh, um, uh, phase one. We did conduct uh, consultations with you and uh, now it's time for the needs assessment that will basically assess your existing needs in the, uh, to, in the effective implementation of the uh, ICH convention and allow us further to plan the project activities that, are, that will be specific to your Dominica context. The national consultations that will continue will, uh, of course, continue to bring together the, uh, those stakeholders that are involved and uh, important for safeguarding of the uh, Dominica's ICH. The phase two will uh, be about uh, trainings and capacity buildings, and uh, this is something that the 2003 convention is um, uh, also implementing in the region, in, um, in the Caribbean, uh, other Caribbean countries. So we are uh, aiming to invite governmental agencies, official civil society, and most importantly, community groups and representatives uh, by conducting three, three workshops. Um, first will be basically on concepts and mechanisms of uh, the UNESCO conventions, convention for three days. Another one for five days will be the uh, community-based inventory. That's where we, we will learn how to address community needs and how to uh, involve communities in the inventory of their uh, precious intangible cultural heritage. The, the uh, third workshop that will last for two days will uh, guide you how to prepare um, requests for the international assistance under the mechanisms of the uh, UNESCO Convention so that you can continue uh, uh, effective safeguard. Uh, about implementation modalities, well, Dominican National Commission for UNESCO is our main implementing partner and will um, engage and coordinate all the relevant national stakeholders as um, uh, uh, the National Commission, Commission is doing right now. Um, UNESCO office in Jamaica is responsible for the project imp implementation overall. We are, of course, in consultation uh, with the, uh, our living heritage entity based in uh, UNESCO HQ in Paris. Um, the workshops will, de will be delivered through the UNESCO network of trained facilitators, and there are few in this region. 
Um, the, the content of, of the workshops, of course, will be adopted to Dominica's um, 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 realities by using UNESCO's capacity building curriculum that is quite elaborated. So what we are planning, um, uh, what outputs are planned uh, at the end of the project? Um, we are aiming to develop specific, specific safeguarding activities in Dominica. We will have the pool of uh, experts, community leaders, and uh, governmental um, employees uh, to be to be there to effective, effectively support implementation of the convention. Uh, we will have a framework, a methodology for community-based inventory. Based on that, you you can continue um, with pilot projects or or uh, targeted um, inventory of of, uh, of the community's heritage. We will also have a roadmap for safeguarding of Dominica's intangible heritage uh, with policy recommendations for the ongoing stakeholder consultation. So thank you so much. Uh, that was the introduction delivered uh, uh, also on behalf of Andrea Richards. Uh, thank you. Okay, we'd now like to call on Andrea Richards, UNESCO expert, for a presentation on the project's objectives and deliverables. That's what. Good morning, everyone. Um, well, Yuri would have just presented on the objectives of the project um, and what we hope to um, achieve in partnership with our, our, um, our partners, <laughs> our stakeholders in Dominica. Um, I'm here to answer any questions that you might have in relation to the project. This is uh, one of a few um, intangible heritage projects that are being implemented in the region. Uh, the region, unfortunately, is one in which uh, there are very few projects being developed in, in, in relation to intangible cultural heritage. And there are so many, um, our intangible heritage is rich in the region, we know this, but yet there are very few projects that are happening. And we're really trying to focus on safeguarding efforts, uh, uh, helping persons to, to document this heritage and looking at ways in which it can be viable for sustainable livelihoods for our people. Um, so I am available afterwards to answer any questions that you may have, and um, I'll just hand over back to our moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would now like to call on Dr. Anna Paolini, Director and Representative at the UNESCO Office in Jamaica, to officially launch the UNESCO ICH project, again via the digital medium. Well, Mr. Matthew, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Honorable Rosalind Paul, Minister of Sport, Culture and Community Development. Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister of Education, Human Resources Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence. Mrs. Romualda Jacint, Secretary General of the Dominican National Commission to, for UNESCO. Excellencies, dear participants, national stakeholders and partners involved in the safeguarding of cultural heritage in Dominica, representative of communities, cultural professional, and renowned expert, greetings and good morning. Let me start by saying that I'm honored to be 
with you this morning, launching this important cultural project, making my first official event as new director of the UNESCO Office for the Caribbean. I really thank you for this opportunity this morning. Without any doubt, the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage allows community to pursue pathways toward inclusive participation, dispute prevention, peace building, and gender equality. Passed down from generation to generation, living heritage is a source of community-based resilience, and let me say, pride and identity. The 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage recognizes in this preamble the importance of living heritage as a driver of cultural diversity and as a catalyst for sustainable development. A special emphasis lies in the recognition and protection of indigenous community as they play an important role in the production, safeguarding, maintenance, and transmission of the living heritage. Those helping the rich cultural diversity and self-respect of the community from which they originate. Moreover, living heritage is also an important asset and a driving force for the economy development of community encompassing a di diverse range of activities of monetary and non-monetary value through local practices, knowledge and festivities, which can help strengthen and benefit local economies. The ratification of the 2003 convention by Dominica in the year 2005 had been critical to move toward acknowledging the importance of the safeguarding of this precious heritage at the national and international level and thereby contributing to the advancement of national sustainable development. The project entitled Strengthening Capacity of the National and Local Level for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage in Dominica is fully in line with the objectives and the principle of the 2003 Convention and will, over the next 18 months, raise awareness of intangible cultural heritage, of its importance for the individual and collective identity, through the finalization of a thorough national need assessment, stakeholder consultation, and the strengthening of local capacities. It has been made possible through the financial contribution of the state of Kuwait through the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund. It will be carried out in close partnership with the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Community Development and the Ministry of Education, Human Resources Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence and the support of the Dominican National Commission for UNESCO as the implementing partner. The project will entail targeted policy advice and the review of national policy, programming, and strategy to ascertain how best to integrate intangible heritage and its safeguarding to develop a roadmap for implementing the convention in Dominica. The strengthening of capacity will be conducted through a series of capacity building activities and we have heard Yuri before mentioning that, for government officials, civil society, and community representatives in the core area of the convention, such as the basic concept and mechanism of the convention, community-based inventory and safeguarding with field exercises, and the training on preparing international assistance requests. UNESCO will make sure to adopt an inclusive approach to guarantee the widest possible participation of relevant stakeholders, in particular from community group, in the design and the implementation of the safeguarding activity in order to leave no one behind. Heritage community leaders, indigenous community, traditional bearers and practitioners, youth, women, girls, teachers, educators, and local media are among those stakeholders that the project will reach out. Their participation is pivotal to generating awareness and fostering self-appropriation and ownership. This project will also aim at creating awareness on the importance of gender equality through a gender-responsive approach in the practice of safeguarding intangible cultural heritage. In present times, the variety of external shocks, such as the COVID pandemic, and the acceleration of extreme events linked to the change of climate is making us more fragile, putting in jeopardy the long-term sustainability of all what we are doing. Nevertheless, 
never before, we have also opportunity to build back differently, strengthening our resilience, sustainability and prosperity based on lessons learned and best experiences. Culture and the diversity of cultural practices is certainly a tool and an opportunity to achieve that. In closing, please allow me to acknowledge the contribution of the Dominican National Commission for UNESCO to make this project launch possible. Thank you to the Secretary General and her team. I also wish to express my sincere gratitude to the state of Kuwait, which, by the way, was one of the countries that I cover in my former capacity as director of the country for the Gulf and Yemen, for its general support. I also wish all involved partners and stakeholders every success in the endeavors of this project. As a last word, let me congratulate the government of Dominica for the completion and the launching of their first voluntary national report on the SDG, presenting at the high level political forum in New York two days ago. We wish all the success to the people of Dominica, aiming to have the first climate resilience country. As I said earlier, sustainability and resilience pass also through the traditional knowledge of communities, its preservation and transmission. With these last words, I'm therefore pleased and honored to declare the project officially launched and really looking forward to the good results. I wish you all a wonderful rest of the morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite the Honorable Minister for Sports, Culture and Community Development, Honorable Rosalind Paul, to give some brief remarks. Let me first recognize my colleague, Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence. The Honorable Kosia Frederick, Minister for the Environment, Rural Modernization, and Kalinago Upliftment. Mr. Olson Matthew, Chief Cultural Officer, Acting. Dr. Anna Pauline, Paulini, Director and Representative, UNESCO Cluster Office for the Caribbean for the official launch of the Dominica UNESCO Project, Intangible Cultural Heritage Project. Mr. Yuri, Peskov, Program Specialist of, for Culture, UNESCO Cluster Officer for the Caribbean, and other officials of UNESCO Cluster Office. Ms. Andrea Richards, UNESCO Consultant, and I bid you welcome to Dominica. Mrs. Rumelda Hyacinth, Secretary General, Dominican National Commission for UNESCO. Former Secretary General, and Ms. Gloria Schillingford, Mrs. Athelyn Murdoch as well. Mr. Malov Mario, United Nations Resident Coordinator. Mrs. Esprit, Senior Administrative Officer of the Blue and Green Economy, Agriculture and National Food Security, staff of the Division of Culture, Ms. Gisel M for the MOE Monitoring and Evaluation, I would think. Um, I said staff of the Division of Culture, other staff members, other invited guests, the media. A pleasant good day to all of you. We thank the UNESCO and the Dominican National Commission for collaborating with the Division of Culture through the Ministry of Sports, Culture, and Community Development.
to ensure the successful implementation of Dominica's UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage Project. And we heard of the various outputs, deliverables of the project, the project focus, which is very important to us. This is the second time Dominica has received financial support from UNESCO under the Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund, which has strong community participation, which has a strong community participation approach and significance based on the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage. In 2004, Dominica received funding for the revitalization of traditional masquerade performing arts and costume making in Dominica. This project assisted the tradition bearers to implement transmission and safeguarding projects income generating activities, community-based research and training related to the traditional masquerade arts and costume making. This new intangible cultural heritage project is timely as we recognize the importance of intangible cultural heritage to cultural diversity and strengthening the sense of belonging pride, and cohesion within communities. The project also supports our years of efforts and tremendous work in the preservation of Dominica's tradition and cultural heritage, much of which we continue to showcase for all to see and experience throughout the years. This includes our rich heritage the rich heritage of our indigenous people, the Kalinago. And we have the minister for Kalinago right here and other members of his staff. It is also in keeping with our government's focus, firstly, on preserving our cultural heritage, and while doing so, capitalizing on the socio-cultural and economic benefits to be, to be derived such as ensuring that it remains as the building block to drive the creative industries in Dominica. Let us also not forget that our intangible heritage is central to our resilience as a people and plays a critical role in, for example, how we responded to sh the shocks posed by Hurricane Maria five years ago. Our traditional ways of doing and being keep us anchored as a people. And it is important that our children know this. We are well known for caring for each other and coming together to support and help in times of need and crisis, an important value that was exhibited during the post Hurricane Maria and which we must safeguard. The project has three objectives. Pilot inventorying, inventorying exercises, capacity building workshops on the 2003 convention and mechanisms to safeguard living heritage and community-based inventorying, inventorying methodologies. The project will be implemented through a community-based approach involving local stakeholders at every stage in the, in the implementation process, which will last for a period of 18 months. Through collaboration with the Dominica National Commission for UNESCO and the Division of Culture through the Ministry of Sports, Culture, and Community Development. We look forward to engaging stakeholders, practitioners, knowledge bearers involved in an intangible cultural heritage activities and hope to create and raise awareness of key elements of living heritage and their variability as well as encouraging safeguard of Dominica's living heritage. 
We cannot overemphasize the, signif the significance of Dominica's culture to everyday living and the spirits of our people and how it enhances that sense of pride and patriotism. Our two years experience during the COVID-19 pandemic highlighted how this could be adversely affected and should spur us to continue to hold our intangible heritage dear and for every citizen to be a custodian of Dominica's cultural heritage. The Ministry of Sports, Culture and Community Development through the Cultural Division stands ready to take the lead not only in implementing this project, but as the catalyst to ensure that we go beyond so that we can reach our desired outcome of always safeguarding Dominica's intangible and tangible cultural heritage. The government of Dominica is always committed to doing so and continues to make the necessary investments. We are happy to be collaborators and partners in this important project. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. At this juncture, we will have a performance by Tasha P., reigning Calypso monarch of Dominica, also a cultural officer with the Cultural Division, as you heard earlier. We're going to celebrate our culture here in Dominica. So Dominicans, feel free to sing with me. And sing loud so everybody can hear you. Okay? Here we go. That's the culture. That's the culture. Dominica. That's the culture. The Dominican culture. Relaxed by a river, drink the purest water. We are the nature, island Dominica. Boy, oh, boy, boy, boy. We value simplicity. Live up to a century. We are the nature, island of the Caribbean. Waterfalls, rivers, and beaches. Come visit, you live with a smile. Hey. Sulfur spring, boiling lake, bring a friend, stay for a while. Listen to the jimping, mazu canting, embrace our culture, belly and quadrille, kadas and buyo, dance to the beat, flirtation and sortis, the music sweet. You agree with me? That's the culture. The Dominican culture, I should see you smiling under your masks. Boy, boy. <laughs> that's the culture, Dominica. Most spontaneous carnival, we're so swell, so we and all. We are the nature, island Dominica. Boy, 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 boy. Black devils and sensei, darkies and the bad move. We are the nature, isle of the world. Rivers and beaches, tea to gorge. Come visit, you live with a smile. Hey, Emerald Pool, Crayon Festival. Bring two friends, stay for a while. Sample we call Vegan codfish, crab back and sandcoach, cuisine you can't miss. Visit escalator chair, glassy and screws. Walk the national trail, snorkeling to choose. Let me see you make some noise, make some noise. That's the culture. That's the culture. So you're gonna sing with me? Dominique, say your pay not too well. Dominique, 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 say your pay not too well. I want to hear y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Let me go. Dominique, Dominique. 
Dominique, or you can do better. You're like Dominicans. Let me hear you. Dominique, Dominic, say I'm paying as you well. One more time, one more time. Let me hear you. One more time. Dominique, Dominique, Dominic, say I'm paying as you well. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tasha P. And um, while we're on that cultural note, let me just remind everybody that all of this coincides with our emancipation celebration. So last night we had a very interesting film viewing at the University of the West Indies. Um, tonight, they will, we will be launching the art exhibition of Francine Ega, Kalinago community people. And um, that will take place at 6 p.m. this evening. Also look out for the launch of the Massac Mural Project. And by launch, I don't mean a reveal, but the launch of the project itself. So keep that in mind. And that will be done next Friday, the 22nd of this month. So look out for that, cultural performances and so on. Also, you'll be hearing a lot more about the Golden Drum Awards as well. So keep that in mind. I would now like to call on the Honorable Minister for Education Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, Honorable Octavia Alfred. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I don't know what there is to say again. However, Honorable Rosalind Paul, Ministry of Sports, Culture, Minister of Sports, Culture, and Community Development, Honorable Kozia Frederick, Minister for the Environment, Rural Modernization, and Kalinago Upliftment. Ms. Giselle, Mrs. Giselle Allport, who is representing the PS of the Ministry of Education. Mr. Earlson Matthew, Chief Cultural Officer. Dr. Anna, I think it's Paolini. I think I got it right. Yes. Director and Representative. UNESCO Cluster Office for the Caribbean <laughs> for the official launch of the Dominica UNESCO program. Mr. Yui Pesco, Program Specialist for Culture, UNESCO Cluster Office for the Caribbean. Ms. Andrea Richards, UNESCO Consultant. Mrs. Ro Mulder, Hyacinth, Secretary Gen General. Dominican National Commission for UNESCO. Former Secretary Generals, Mrs. Gloria Schillingford and Mrs. Aflin Modoc. Mr. Marlon Murray, United Nations Resident Coordinator. Mrs. Esprit, for the, representing the Blue and Green Economy, Agriculture, National Food Security. Staff of the Vision of Culture. Mr. Hyacinth for saying the prayer for us this morning. Other staff and officials of the Ministry of Education, Human Resource, Vocational Development, and National Excellence, and all other stakeholders, specially invited guests. Good morning, everybody. It is truly an honor and pleasure to participate in the launch of this intangible cultural heritage project, financed through the support of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. UNESCO, at the 42nd session of its general conference, adopted the, 20, the 2003 convention for the strengthening and the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage in Paris on the 17th of October, 2003. The government of Dominica ratified the 2003 Convention for the Intangible Cultural Heritage in 2005 as an indication of the importance of safeguarding the intangible heritage of our country, proof of our nation's commitment to ensuring that our rich and diverse living heritage is passed on from generation to generation. In March 2021, UNESCO approved this project 
in the amount of 65,000 US dollars. This project will be significant since its scope covers identifying, documenting, and safeguarding our intangible cultural heritage, training custodians of this heritage, documenting the knowledge of our practitioners, and creating awareness about the intangible cultural heritage among our population, especially our young people. Safeguarding our intangible cultural heritage is critical in it, the sustainability of our development, of our country, and notably our tourism industry. Dominica has a long history of traditional knowledge and skills of cultural practices, including our oral traditions and expressions, social practices, rituals, language, performing arts, folk song, techniques of handicraft, festivals, food, and many other practices. As you heard Miss Paul touch on a little, how did we survive after Hurricane Maria? First, all kinds of prayers. All kinds of prayers coming from left, right, and center. Washing by hand on the river stone. Lighting firewood outside in the yard. Story time in the moonlight, and the list goes on. We therefore wish to thank UNESCO for your timely initiative and support. We are grateful for your commitment in assisting Caribbean states like Dominica to identify the various avenues for using culture as a tool for development and of raising awareness of the importance of intangible cultural heritage. Documentation and recording of our heritage and also access to these records and of our heritage sites. These are crucial aspects in educating our students as we endeavor to build patriotism and national pride in our people. One component of being resilient is knowing who we are, from whence we came, who and what made us, and many aspects of these are hidden in the main attributes of our intangible cultural heritage. I encourage all communities and individuals within these communities to become active participants in this project because it is our cultural heritage and we are the owners of it. Therefore, we must be involved in its safeguarding efforts. I therefore would like to wish the project team every success in the implementation of this project. Let us strengthen our capacity at national and local levels for the safeguarding of our intangible cultural heritage, because if we lose it, we will regret it. Our cultural heritage is responsible for our survival throughout the ages, and this is what will help us in overcoming at every stage in our development. God bless you. Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. As we come to the end of this morning's proceedings, I would like to call on Mrs. Romalda Hyacinth, Secretary General of the Dominican National Commission for UNESCO, to give the vote of thanks. Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence. Honorable Kozia Frederick, Minister for the Environment, Rural Modernization, and Kalinago Upliftment. Mr. Lucian Blackmore, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Sports and Culture and Community Development. Mr. Elson Matthew, Chief Cultural Officer, Acting. Dr. Anna Paolini, Director and Representative, UNESCO Cluster Office for the Caribbean for the official launch of the Dominica National Commission, UNESCO ICH project. Mr. Yuri Preshkov, Program Specialist for Culture, UNESCO Cluster Office for the Caribbean and other officials of UNESCO Cluster Office on the call. 
Ms. Andrea Richard, UNESCO consultant, former Secretary Generals Gloria Schillingford and Athlin Murdoch, Mr. Marlon Murray, United Nations resident coordinator, Ms. Esprit representing the PS, Blue and Green Economy, Agriculture, and National Food Security, Ms. Giselle Alport representing the PS, Ministry of Education. Representative of the DDA, staff of the Division of Culture, other staff and officials of the Ministry of Education, Human Resource, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, specially invited guests, media. Good morning. It is with pleasure to welcome you today to this launch in celebration of our Dominica living heritage. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, is tasked with supporting the safeguarding of living heritage and ensuring its transmission to future generations as stipulated in the 2003 Convention. Therefore, we must thank UNESCO for its continued work and support to small island states such as Dominica in the area of culture. We thank the Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund for supporting this activity and the UNESCO Cluster Office for the Caribbean for its technical support in this project. As we seek to build partnerships aimed at safeguarding Dominica's intangible cultural heritage. Let me also convey my sincerest thanks to the government of Dominica for their continued support of the Dominica National Commission for UNESCO. Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister of Education and Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, and Honorable Rosalind Paul, Minister of Sports, Culture and Community Development, both for your vision and support to the advancements of, the, of our culture and your remarks today. Honorable Kozia Frederick for taking time off of your schedule to be here with us. Dr. Anna Paolini, Director and Representative of UNESCO Cluster Office for the launch of the project. Yuri Preskov, Program Specialist for Culture, UNESCO Office for the Caribbean and other officials of the Cluster Office. Ms. Andrea Richards, UNESCO Consultant. Ms. Esprit, Representative for the Ministry of Blue Economy. Ms. Giselle Alport, Representative of the Ministry of Education, Mr. Marlon Murray, United Nations Residence Coordinator, staff of the Division of Culture, and staff in the different ministries, specially invited guests, Secretary Generals from Curoso, Curoso Grenada, Jamaica, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, just to name a few, for your continued support. Former Secretary Generals, who I call on now and again for your advice. Dr. Lennox Honichich, our team of experts who have been assisting in the preparation of the action plan, review of the budget, and discussions in mapping for this ICH project. Mr. Raymond Lawrence, Mr. Stevenson Hyacinth, Mr. John Fountain, and Mr. Patrick Hill. Ms. Marita Hyacinth, Senior Program Officer, Ministry of Education, for assisting us here this morning. Ms. Ch Chizzy, Chizzy Esprit, our stenographer. Mr. Ursel Matthew, our Chief Cultural Officer Acting, our gracious host. Mr. Stevenson Hyacinth, who led us in prayer. Ms. Tasha Pelte, Cultural Officer for, her, for the National Anthem and her rendition. Ms. Lisa Luizzi, the Secretariat Secretary, to the media for gracing us with your presence and covering this important launch, launch, we thank you for your usual support. Once again, allow me to thank UNESCO for your financial and technical support as we embrace our living heritage and safeguard it for the future generations. We assure you that this project will assist in inventoring developing effective safeguard measures and building capacities in ICH for the benefit of all Dominicans. 
I thank you. All right, so we've come to the end. Thanks for coming and safe, wishing you safe travels. <laughs>